Okay, so you guys remember when we talked about whether it's going to be a strong acid or a weak acid, right? And then how, in, in this case, the triple bond makes it a stronger acid. The, okay, so when we're talking about acidity, that's just that strength of the acid. The more acidic something is, that, that means that you're going to be, because strong acids are going to have lower pH, right? And then, so you want to think of it as in terms of the pH, the lower the pH is, the stronger the acid is, right? Okay, so you remember when we talked about the triple bond and the double bond adding to that, or you could just say the, the hybridization, right? When we talked about whether it's protonated and, you know, so protonated is going to make it more acidic because you're adding an H plus, right? Where uh, in this case is, both of those are, are more acidic, but in the case of alcohol, alcohol is like a pH normally, so like a pH 10 or so. And then when you add a, an extra H plus, it brings it to that acidic range, where the means are basic, right? Because ammonia is basic, right? And so if I remember correctly, you were actually calculating the acidity based upon that, right? So, so you can use the structure because these are based on structure, right? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. I've got to look at that because I don't I'm not going to use it because I didn't teach you cardio. So I have to think about what that is. So it's probably a really cool mnemonic that yeah. I don't know. So but we can look it up. Yeah, and figure it out. As soon as I know another mnemonic, that'll be good for me because then I get teach you guys. Okay, so you guys already know about this. You know, it's like, oh, one is the reactant, one is the product. That's essentially what's going on here, right? So now we need to sit there and start talking about some of the, the nomenclature that's going to be associated with it. And so I want you guys to start thinking about nomenclature, right? That's what this whole chapter is pretty much about. We're going to start talking about nomenclature and we're going to start talking about different aspects of things. And so you guys need to pay attention to those. Uh, you guys remember those electro, inter intermolecular forces? Intermolecular forces, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say electrostatic, but intermolecular forces, inter versus intra, right? You guys remember the difference? Interstate versus intrastate. Enters between two molecules. That's right. That's right. Okay, so you're going to need to be paying attention to that as well. Okay, so let's start off. It's real simple, right? Okay, so let's write it down. So here, we're going to talk about alkanes, and then we're going to talk about some alkenes and some alkynes. So al ALK, that just basically means hydrocarbon, right? It represents hydrocarbon. The AN is single bonds, okay? So we're gonna be talking about single bonded hydrocarbons. So if there's one, car if there's one carbon, it's, the prefix is gonna be meth. If there's two carbons, the pre prefix is gonna be eth. Three carbons, prop. Four carbons, bute. Five carbons, prop. Oh, actually, that's wrong. This is a mistake. That's totally wrong. It's pent. They put prop twice. Pent. Pentane. Pentane, yes. I gotta fix that chart. Okay. If there's six carbons, hex. Watch them. Seven carbons, hept. Eight carbons, oct. Nine carbons, known. Ten carbons, dec. So decane. Eleven carbons, un. Dec. Cane. 
12 carbons, dough, deck, okay. Fourteen carbons. Try. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now the difference between A and E, E and E. We're, we're straying from the book a little bit. It's not in the same order. E and E is there. There's E and E means that there's a double bond in there, right? So this guy is a single bond, A, E and E. So if it was, we can't have a methane, we could have ethene, which is ethene. That means there's a double bond between the two carbons. And put H2 here and H2 here. <clears throat> okay, so that would be ethene. They'll also call it ethylene, right? Which is dumb. But that's the common name. Okay. So we're going to be talking about IUPAC nomenclature. And then you guys will, because you're, you have to know it, we will be talking about some of the common name nomenclature as well, too. Okay. So E and E basically means that there's a double bond somewhere in the structure. Okay. So at least one double bond somewhere in the structure. Okay, so then if it was propylene, that means that there is a double bond somewhere in that structure. Okay, if it was butene, there's a double bond somewhere in that structure. Okay, and we'll start talking about location and all that stuff, nomenclature and stuff. Now, if you looked at this, the A and E all the way down. So if you notice, as we get more and more carbons, our boiling point changes, right? So our boiling point actually increases the more carbons that are added on. Why do you guys think that's the case? You're not breaking bonds apart because it's not going to, hopefully you're not breaking bonds apart because that's a whole other thing. That's a reaction. If we're just boiling it, we're just kind of, Think about what I said earlier. What was that? The more bonds I have, okay? So for instance, yeah, so in, in other words, you're saying, let me make sure I understand what you're saying. So here, this guy only has the bonds between the hydrogens, right? And that's it. Well, here I have a bond between the, hyd the carbons and then those hydrogens. And then I have, so those carbon chains are getting longer, right? So since those carbon chains are getting longer, what do you think is happening since they're getting longer? Bam, more surface area. So the longer you are, right? It's gonna take a lot more to sit there and separate. Why is it gonna take longer to separate? What, what's happening? What did I just talk about? Things you've got to think about. Now you guys got to think about these things. Yeah, we, okay. So you guys just ignore everything I say. Just throw it off with me. Think about this specifically. Now you guys have to start really thinking about this particular things. It was one of the things in 2B and 1B. What was that? Intermolecular forces. Okay, that's right. Intermolecular forces. What do you think is happening? You have more surface area. What's going to be happening? How are these guys going to be interacting with each of the different molecules? Come on, come on, you guys can do it. Surface area, we were there. Oh, 
Okay. So it's going to take, because you have longer, more surface area, it's going to take longer to sit there and separate those molecules, right? More energy has to be put in to separate those molecules. So what's holding those, those together? Because if I remember correctly, these guys are nonpolar, is that correct? What was that? That is right. It would be dispersion. You think about it. If you have something really tiny, you don't have that many dispersion forces. But the longer your molecule is, the more dispersion forces that you're going to have, right? So that's going to be the things that are holding you together is those dispersion forces. So let's type that. Down. You guys just threw one B out the window all together. You're like, that class, what? He just told me that 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 word. What is that word? It's like a cuss word or something. Okay, so I miss. I might have misspelled that. I did. I'll look it up to make sure I put it right. This person, yeah. So basically, you're you're basically the interactions that you're going to be getting. You know, they're also called Van der Waals, right? So these are Van der Waals interactions, right? So you're just getting these dispersion forces. Okay, there's a carbon, there's a hydrogen. Oh, it's sliding over to the carbon a little bit more, you know, the electron going that way. And so it's gonna just induce that other molecule kind of keep, keep, keeping them stuck together, right? So the longer you are, the more surface that you're doing, then it's gonna take more energy to sit there and suffer, right? So you're right, it's gonna take more energy to sit there and do it, right? And so that's the reason why the boiling point is gonna increase with the size of the carbon chain. Okay, am I lying? Is it increasing with the size of the carbon chain? Yeah, okay. So melting, the melting point. How's the melting point gonna change? Is it gonna change? Now, aren't all of these guys dependent on what forces? Dispersion forces. Or our, our intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces, intermolecular forces, right? So it's going to be dependent on that, right? And so if you kind of take a look at that, although this guy's crazy, right? That's an exception. Huh? Oh, I guess it isn't. No, it is. As we get lower, lower, and then we jump up real high, and then real high, and then so on and so forth, and then it gets, it starts obeying a certain pattern, right? Okay. So I have to figure out why the hell that, that, that's the case. These, these two, that's interesting, right? Because you guys noticed it goes from 82 to 183 to 187, and then it goes, it starts increasing again, so. Okay, so I also need to check to make sure that their answers are right based upon their track record so far. That's twice. <clears throat> okay. How are you guys feeling? You guys, you, you, can you see where, where I'm going with this, right? So the things that are going to be affected are going to be your boiling points, your melting points, and your density, right? Because the more forces that you have, that's going to cause things to be more dense. Okay. Let's see. Come on. Okay. Let me clear this. Okay, so we talked about decane, undecane, dodecane, tridecane, and it would go down, continuously go down the down the chain. So when you start to get to 20. So that's econsane, and then 21 is henic, I'm sorry, henicosane, and then tricotane when you get to 30, okay? So 20s, you start with the econsane, right? 21 would be 
10 equals same, okay? And then when we get to 30, 30, 30 is try, uh, try at contain, okay? So we, that's gonna be at 30. This is gonna be at 20, okay? Uh, you should memorize them all because, you know, up. So I would say mem memorize at least do 20, 21, and 30. Okay. So the ones in between there, because uh, when we start getting into the chains that are beyond that, you're not going to be calling that because a lot of those are just going to be branching chains, right? So there's very few, because these are all um, single chain and they're not branching, non-branching chains, okay? So these are gonna be straight chains and that's it, okay? So when you start getting uh, above that, you're gonna start getting into those branching chains. So there's very few that will just be that single straight chain, okay? Okay, you guys okay with that so far? You guys, your eyes are looking heavy, okay? Okay, so so the terminology are homologs. Homologs are gonna be different by one CH chains. So basically they're gonna be branch. These guys differ by a single chain. So therefore they're gonna be referred to as homologs. Okay, so let's start talking about those structures and how we draw those structures. And then we're also gonna start drawing those structures differently, right? So methane is pretty simple, right? Uh, so these are, you know, so this is the molecular formula. This is gonna be the cuculus structure. This is gonna be the condensed structure, okay? And then I also want you guys to know the stick structure because I prefer using the stick structure because I hate drawing out all of the environments, okay? So uh, you need to be very familiar with the stick structure, okay? So you guys remember the stick structure from the first day? Yeah? You say kinda, yeah? Okay, so what with the stick structure? Well, this guy, it's not gonna have a stick structure, right? So what about this guy? This guy would be what? Right? Okay, this guy. Let me erase this. What would be the stick structure for this guy? Okay. One, two, three, right? So again, the stick structure are just showing the carbons and that's all. And so you just, you calculate the number of hydrogens that are there because you know that every in carbon is gonna have three hydrogens. Every inner carbon is gonna have two. So all together, that's gonna be a total of eight hydrogens, right? Or this one, these are two N carbons, right? So then that's a total of, six hydrogens. So often you'll see me, I'll be doing it in my head. I'm like, in carbon, in carbon, two, three, four, how many groups? So what does this guy look like? I like that lightning bolt, right? Okay. And so you should be able to calculate the carbons, two inner carbons, two N carbons. How many car, I mean, not carbons, how many hydrogens? How many? 10, okay. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if you guys got this. Yeah, this is gonna take a little bit of time, I see. Okay, so stick structure for each of these. So we've done four. So what does five look like? We know that that's pentane. So 
So that's one, two, three, four, five. So then six is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Piece of cake, right? No problem. Good. Questions, concerns, cash. Yeah. I don't want to make you go draw the stick structures for these. We'll save that for later. That'll be a test question or something. Okay. Okay, so now we get to talk about isomers. Right? Okay, so here, if it has four carbons, it's called what? What was that? Butane, okay. Okay, so we have it in the case of where it's completely straight, right? So that is often just referred to as butane, but it'll also be called in butane as a neo, new single line straight in butane, okay? So now if it has four carbons, this guy, one, two, three, four, it has four carbon, this guy is also called isobutane, okay? Iso because you have your carbon chain, this is your main chain, and then on that middle carbon, you have a methyl group hanging off. These guys are called methyl groups, right? So this is isobutane. This guy could also be called one, two, three, that stands for three is what? What was the three chain carbon called? What was it? Propyl. So it's propane. That would be the end. And then it has a single carbon hanging off of it. And that's on the second carbon. So then you would call it 2-methyl propane. Two methyl propane. Okay, so when there's a side chain hanging off of it, we put a YL on that. So on that prefix, it's one carbon, YL. The main chain is always going to be the longest chain. Okay, main chain is always the longest chain. Okay, so we call it isobutyl, that is its common name, Isol, I'm sorry, isobutane. So this guy is called isobutane, that's the common name. Its IUPAC name would be 2-methylpropane. Okay, make sense? Two methyl propane, that's IUPAC. And that's what we're going to teach you. We're going to teach you some of the common names and IUPAC names as well. Okay. Okay. So these guys are considered to be constitutional isomers. Okay. Of each other. So they have the same uh, chemical formula or the molecular formula. Okay. But 
how and where they're located is different. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Questions? Concerns? Kool-Aid? Okay. So again, these are considered ISO because you have a methyl group here and a methyl group here, and then you have one hanging off here. Or you could have just said, I have a methyl group here, I have a methyl group here, and I have one hanging off there. Right? Either way, it would be fine. Same concept. Okay. Make sense? Okay, so let's go further. Come on. Because I'm going to go ahead. Oops. <clears throat> okay, so this guy, this would be our N pentane, its common name. Pentane is what we would call it one, two, three, four, five carbons. Right. This guy is called isopentane. Hey, we got a one here, one here. And so then you have these guys hanging out. Okay. So what would be another name for this guy? It's iupactane. Okay. It has how many longest carbon chain is how long? Four. So, so then we would call it what? So it'll be two methyl butane. That's right. Two methyl and as we know, isopentane because. It has those two methyls here, and then you have these chains hanging off there, so then that makes it that ISO. Okay. This guy here, this is its IUPAC name. One, two, three is the longest carbon chain, or we could say one, two, three is the longest carbon chain, either way. And then on the second carbon, it has two methyl groups. It has one, two methyl groups hanging off. Okay, so then this guy would be 2,2-dimethylpropane. Okay, so that would be the IUPAC name for it because it has two methyl groups hanging off of it. Okay. You guys are really quiet today. You make me worried here. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Okay. Okay, so six carbons. Six carbon is going to be called hexane. Okay, so this guy is called, it would be in hexane, in neo. Um, so in hexane, or it just be called hexane. And when they make reference to the systematic name, they're just making reference to the IUPAC nomenclature. Okay, so this guy, that's one, two, three, four, five, five carbon chain with one methyl group hanging off the second carbon. And you choose it to be the second carbon because you always want the shortest numbering system possible, right? We could have said it was the fifth carbon, sorry, not the fifth carbon, fourth carbon, but that wouldn't be the shortest numbering system possible. Two is smaller than four. Okay, so this guy would be 2-methylpentane, or we call this guy isohexane, because we have methyl methyl over here in that corner, so we'll call that guy iso, okay? <clears throat> this guy, one, two, three, four, right? With carbon hanging off the two carbon, right? 2 2 dimethyl, two methyl groups hanging off. The long chain, one, two, three, four. Four chain carbon is what? 
it. Okay. Okay, so this guy, one, two, three, four, five, long carbon chain. So five carbon chain pencil, right? And if I have one carbon hanging off the one, two, three, third carbon, three methyl pentane. You guys see that? Good. So let's see. Uh, we're going to go up to, let's do one more. We'll do go over one more and then we'll go to the whiteboard and I'll throw a whole bunch of, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff at you here. Okay. So this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, heptane, isoheptane. Again, you see that little corner that makes that iso. Okay. And then, or we could also call this two. Methyl hexane. Okay. So you guys kind of see the trend. Right? Okay. So let me give you your, your other groups real quick here. So if we remove one of those hydrogens and then we just have H, I mean, in this case, one less hydrogen, we have it attached to something. This guy is a methyl group. This guy is an ethyl group. This guy is a propyl group. This guy is a uh, butyl group. This guy's a pencil group. Now we can also have isobutyl groups as well. And so they're going to have that same structure where you have an iso formation as well. Okay. So I'm going to draw some up and I want you guys to start trying to name. I don't know if I like this book so much. I picked it, so I got to live with it for at least the first semester. So, okay. So always find the longest chain, okay? And if you guys can tell me if there are any isos in here, since we've talked about iso, then point those out as well too. So give me the common nomenclature and the systematic nomenclature. Are you back? Ooh. She's cute. Oh, my butt. Yep. Common name, if you can get the common name. And I packs. Okay, we got some names. Yes, no, maybe. Okay, first one. That again, octane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, what else do I need to have in front of it? It's, it's not just octane. You have two methyl octane, okay. That is correct. Okay, so we wanted to number the longest carbon chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so and then we have a methyl group hanging off of it. That's a single carbon hanging off. Okay. So that is correct. Okay. So what would be its common name? Isoponone. Okay. What about this guy? Is that again? Pentane. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's pentane. Okay, what should be in front? Is it three? Is it located on the third carbon? Yeah. 
Okay, so but it's two. We have two branches. One, two. So it'll be two, two, dimethyl. That's right. Okay. So hopefully it's coming. Uh, ISO in there somewhere? Okay, so it wouldn't have a common name. You go by the systematic name, is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. You'd probably go by the systematic name, but you could also call it, it would be two iso, yeah. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be dyes because there's there's two. So it'd be methyl, but it'd be two methyl dyes, uh, two methyl iso uh, hexane. So you're saying it's on the second carbon, you have the carbon chain. In addition to the ISO. That's right. The two where it's at. Okay, this guy. Two methyl. So dodecane, one, two, two, you have to count it, four, five, 11, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, dodecane. Or we could also call it isododecane. Iso, it would be hexane. Yeah, because you add that carbon onto the end. So that's hex, right? And then you just have a car, uh, methyl of hanging on. Yes, so you should be memorizing both the common name and the, the systematic name or the IUPAC name. IUPAC name, you're going to be definitely held responsible for, but like this one here, I wouldn't hold you responsible for that because that one is just it's a little tricky. But the ones that are, are common, that are commonly used, isodecane, isobutane, iso, okay, you want to be familiar with those. So when you have to add the methyl in front of it and stuff like that, don't worry about that. If you just get the, the IUPAC nomenclature for that thing. Okay, this one. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you said three, Four, four, try methyl. Octane. Everybody agree? Anybody disagree? Okay, piece of cake. Good. Okay, let's add some more, some more hazard to it. What's that? Sorry, Dr. Henry, this thing is logging me out. It's logging you out? Yeah. Okay, well, 
Sorry. Okay, we're gonna add some more stuff to it. So you ready for the next part? Let's see. Yes. Okay, so as I said earlier, we could have a methyl group, we could have the ethyl group, we could have propyl group, we could have butyl group, we could have pentyl group, we could have hexyl group. So those are just be side chains hanging off the main carbon chain. Okay, again, you want to find the longest carbon chain first, and then you start worrying about the side chains. Okay. Okay, so these are some of the common common names for alcohol. Now, these are not the IUPAC names. We'll talk about those here in a second, okay? So if you have a hydrocarbon has an OH attached to it, it's an alcohol. If your hydrocarbon has a NH2 attached to it, it's an amine. If your hydrocarbon has an X, X meaning it's gonna either be a, a halide, it's gonna be Hydrogen, I mean, not hydrogen, I mean, uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, or acetamine, then it is going to be an alkyl halide. If your hydrocarbon, you have a hydrocarbon on both ends and you have an oxygen in between them, those are ethers. Okay. Now, the way that we would name these is you recognize that you have a your functional group and then you try to identify your hydrocarbon okay so like this first guy is called methyl alcohol again these are the common names not the IUPAC names okay methyl alcohol so if it was two carbons let's say it was this Right away, one, two, and then OH. What would this guy be called? Ethyl alcohol, yes. Okay. What about two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? Okay, this guy. Deco. Alcohol. Okay. So again, that's a common. So then all you're doing is using the the functional or the carbon chain with the YUL and then alcohol at the end, okay? So now the, the IUPAC name in this case would be one, two. So then that guy would be ethanol. Ethane, because there's single bonds, all, okay? This guy would be un decane. Oh. Okay. I know it's not exciting yet. Don't worry about it. It'll get fun. <laughs> okay, so with the amines, 
that means we put okay so two carbons and then we put amine so two carbons is ethyl amines so if i had a three carbon chain one two three then we'll put it in h this guy would be called What is a three carbon chain? Propyl, because then you gotta put the YL, so it'll be propyl. Oops, let's spell it. Propylamine. Oh my gosh, it's right down here. Okay, now this guy, if we have, let's make it a little more complicated. This guy is also called an amine. There's the nitrogen. So this is, you can't tell how many carbons are attached. <clears throat> that's a one, two carbon chain. That's a one, two carbon chain and one carbon chain. So this guy would be called diethyl methyl. I mean, <coughs> okay. And the funny thing is, the common name is very much the same thing as the IUPAC name. Same concept. You end it with amine and you put the ethyl part in there. Okay. How many of you guys have your uh, your packet? At the end of it, did I give you guys a new one? The very end of it, it has all of the functional groups. Okay. And it also tells you the process of naming. Right? Are you guys there? Be clear. <laughs> okay, so if we have, let's see, this guy would be called so if it's an ether, what was that? It's an ether, yes. So what would we call this? It has a methyl and a methyl. So we would call that, bless you, dimethyl ether. Okay. And that's again the common name. 
So the IUPAC name would be methyl. Methoxy, sorry, methoxy methane. Okay, so the ether is just gets that oxy, and then you put in longest chain ends at the end, but since these are both the same chain. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so the next one is the acyl halides. Okay, so in this case, we just put carbon chain and then we put, in this case, bromide. So it's a three carbon chain, propyl bromide. Simple? Okay. That's, again, the common name. Now, the IUPAC name. Bromides or the halogens, they are all lower in priority. And I actually have to print that out for you guys, the priority list. And since they're lower in priority, we would call this guy one, two, three. So it'll be three. So it's propane. Pain. You tell me where it's located. It's located at the terminal end. So then in this case, it would be one. One bromo, propane. So that tells me that the bromine is at the terminal end, at the first carbon. This will be my first carbon in this case then. This is my second carbon. And then this is my third carbon. Okay. So that would be the systematic name. I mean, the IUPAC. Okay, so I'm going to put a couple up there. I'm going to see how you guys are getting it, okay? And then we're going to have to take a break because you guys are looking tired. Y'all are looking tired. But I was looking tired. I thought my bags were like, man, I have like 50 times the amount of energy as you guys who falling asleep, okay? So let's put a couple up there and then we'll see how you guys do. Okay, get some answers for me. Okay, so first one. One, two, three, four, five. Mental alcohol. Okay. Okay, someone else for this guy. You said pentyl, ethyl, ether? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two. Common name. Okay. Longest chain. Five or two. Five. So it's going to end with the pentane. Okay, so then it'll be ethyl, yeah, ethoxy. Okay, and then the ethyl should go in front of the pentyl because it's alphabetical. So that's me. Okay. Oops, sorry, I put too much in there. 
Okay, the next one. So one, two, three, four, five. That's right. One, two, three, four, five. Pentel. Okay, and the last one. Oh, its common name would be the same. I think it's. I mean, not its common name. It's IUPAC name. I you pack this on the bottom. Okay. Was that? Hep. Hepto. That's right. Hepto. Chloride. Okay, and it's it's IUPAC name. Okay, piece of cake. Very complicated. You said, yeah. The, the common name often we'll put the YL and then alls, right? So it puts the name on it. Like for instance, this is an amine, right? It's just YL amine, YL alcohol, YL ether, where the IUPAC name incorporates it, phenol. Ethoxypenthane. Penthane amine. Fluoroheptane. Do you see the difference? So you'll you'll have these subgroups instead of just going back to the YL. YL is for everything for the common name. Okay. Are you pack? Yeah, it, it only it does include the YL, but only for the side chains. So it's only for side chain. Where these guys, they're for the main carbon chain, and it, it doesn't matter. They'll use it for both. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so let's take a uh, we'll say five-ish, ten-ish minute break. So go to the Mesa room and nap snacks. Because that came up with snacks. It's not from a hard time. Oh, my butt is sore. I'm sitting so much. So I told you guys there's a lot of me.
I need to go back to it. What class? Which bio? How's that going? Uh -huh. Yeah. I always turn to memorization. I will extend the homework. Because it's due tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. They do have the books now? No, they don't have the books yet. Yeah, he ordered the wrong books. So it's, you know, it's a long story. He had the wrong books. We're getting the right ones. She's saying, she's saying you got you. You know, the bug, I tried getting it, but it won't come into the water. Negotiator. Let me think on it. I'll think on it.
Two different years, yeah. Yeah, but your your exam were all multiple guests. There's was. So. It's going to be in four weeks, right? No, not in four weeks. Farther? <laughs> Even better? No, 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 in about two weeks. Yeah, in about two weeks. Yes, I always give you guys a practice exam. Yeah. Early. I, I, I'll think about it. Online. Yeah. The first the first two are gonna be online. The last one is gonna be on I mean the first two are gonna be online. First three are gonna be online. And then the last one is gonna be face to face, and then the final is gonna be face to face. So it's gonna be, I haven't decided yet. It might be yeah. They made some modifications to Kim 101, so. Okay. Okay, now. Let's see what happens. Okay. So you guys ready to move forward? Yes. Okay, let's add some more, some more layers. Okay, so this guy is considered the primary carbon. This guy is considered the secondary carbon, right? So if things are on our secondary carbon, then we are gonna sit there and make note of it, right? So like for instance, this guy here, it's on the secondary carbon. This guy is gonna be called isopropyl group. So this guy would be called isopropyl chloride. Okay, you guys got it? Okay. So this is on the primary group. So then they, this guy is called just propyl chloride. You see the difference? Squinting, is it that small? Okay. What's that? Mm -hmm. It'll be isopropyl. 
because it's ISO. It's on the ISO loop, right? So you have the two propyls next to it. So it's in the center. So same ISO meaning the same. So you have like the same on both sides. ISO. Does that make sense? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so there's two ways of drawing the isopropyl. So we could draw it like this, or we could draw it like this. Okay. Okay, so butyl, there are four different butyl groups. Okay, so we have our, our primary carbon, it's gonna be that very first carbon. Okay. So this guy, of course, is our butyl group. We know that this guy is our isobutyl group because iso, and then that would be isobutyl. This guy here would be sec butyl. If it's on the carbon, that's gonna be attached to something, right? So sec butyl. This guy here is called, uh, Tert butyl. Okay, because you have the attachments here, three attachments, and then that'll be your fourth, like tetra, tert. So, and then sometimes you'll see it written as T butyl, T butyl, S butyl, and then this is always written as isobutyl. Okay, again, these are, are these common names or are these IUPAC names? These are common names, yes. Okay, so also this guy here, as I said, it's also called in butyl, right? The very first one, in butyl. Can you guys see it on the other side? Yeah. Okay, so in butyl, sec butyl, I mean, in butyl, isobutyl, butyl, sec butyl, Okay, so let's see if I have, you have your hand raised up. No. Okay, I may have an answer. Okay. Okay, so let's see, let's go. Right away. Okay, and let's do Okay, so what is this guy? What's that? 
Okay. This will be butanol or butyl alcohol, common name. Some of them I will ask you to name both common and IUPAC. So you need to know both. When it gets really like in the nitty gritty, like when there's a lot of things going on, we'll go with IUPAC because it's a lot easier. Okay, what about this guy? Okay, it's an amine. How many carbons? Four carbons. So, but which butyl? Look at the structure. Tert. Yes. This is tertiary carbon, so it's tert. So, tert. Tert butyl. I mean, got my L. Okay, what about this guy? That's right, ISO. Butyl alcohol. And this guy. It's an ether, but what is the ether? One, two, three, four carbons. And it's coming off the second carbon. Yeah. So it'd be sec butyl. Like butyl, one, two carbons. Okay. Ethyl. Then ether. Okay, you had a look, Kayla. Okay, so we look at our carbons. Primary carbon, primary carbon. Both of those are considered primary carbons, right? These guys, yes. So N carbons would be considered primary carbons. The secondary carbons are the one that's second, right? So that's one. That's two, that will be your secondary every carbon, or it's the second one that's attached to it. So one, two, secondary carbon. Tertiary carbon is there, are, in this case, you have other things that are attached. One, two, and then you have this one attached and this one attached. So you have a group off of here, a group off of here, a group off of here, and a group off of here. So tert meaning kind of fourish, right? And then secondary. And then primary, primary, okay. Here's with me. So it's attached off the very first carbon is considered to be primary. This is the second carbon. It's coming off the second, secondary. Tertiary, that means that you have, because carbon at most can hold how many attachments? Four, right? 
So two, three of the attachments are attached with something else, right? Like in this case, methyl groups. And then it's coming off that center carbon that's attaching everything. So that's, okay. So look at the structures, it'll help you, okay? So again, short, they also call this T-butyl. They'll call that S-butyl and they'll call that N-butyl. Okay. Okay. So clear. Does that help? Happy. Okay. So in butyl, right? If there's no branches, it's all straight chain. It's always going to be an in butyl, right? So that's unbranched. Okay. N basically stands for unbranched. Don't know how to get there, but they get there, okay? <clears throat> okay, so these are just examples. Okay. So here, primary carbon, your secondary carbon, and your tertiary carbon, one, two, you have an H attached here. So then that would be your tertiary carbon because it has four independent attachments. Okay. Sorry, tertiary hydrogen, sorry, my bad. Okay, Mr. Grant. Okay, questions? Okay, so primary carbon, bonded to one carbon, secondary carbon bonded to two carbons, tertiary carbons bonded to three carbons. Primary hydrogens are attached to the primary carbon. Secondary hydrogens are attached to the secondary carbons. Tertiary carbon is attached, is that one attachment attached to the, the third carbon. Okay, questions? Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. So, this is what we run into. So, when we start talking about those sec, those secondary carbons and stuff like that, it becomes a lot more complicated, right? It's not a good way of naming it, right? And this gets to that whole, that whole common name. And so that's why the common name works for only so many things. And then we have to move over, right? So like, for instance, this guy is considered a secondary carbon, right? This guy is also considered a secondary carbon. Okay, so which one is the right one? Which one is sec? Sec pentyl chloride. Exactly, right? Because you can't say which one is. And so, so that's why it becomes very difficult to use this system. Okay? So are you guys with me? Okay, so the comma system became somewhat obsolete because things get more complicated. Okay, so we're, we're really limited on the use of common system, although, man, they like to use it all the fucking time, let me tell you. So, but it makes it a lot more complicated. <clears throat> so, when we get to Turk, well, terp works fine with bute, butyl, and pentyl, but it works crappy with hexyl for the same reason. Okay. Which one is the correct one? Okay. So there are going to be limits to what we can use that on. That's the whole point. Okay. Are you guys with me? Yeah, no, maybe. Okay. 
Okay. So, in this case, we always have a methyl group replacing one of the, the hydrogens on that second carbon, right? So, so that's how we end up with that iso. Okay, so we've already talked about this and what that looks like. And then, so this is isobutyl. You know what isobutyl? This is secbutyl. This is uh, tert-butyl. Then we get to pentyl, then we get isopentyl, then we get the hexyl, then we get the isohexyl, you know. Okay. So again, you see where the limitations are gonna lie at. Okay, so as I said, first thing that we always do is identify the longest chain. How are we doing on time? Okay. We're gonna finish part of this. We're not gonna finish the whole chapter today, unfortunately. I know you guys are bummed about that. So. Um, okay, so you first wanna identify the long chain. Now, here's the cool thing about the longest chain, right? You can sit there, it can be going this way. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or it can go this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But you want the number where the branch is coming off to be the lowest number it can be. So this way would be the correct way. Do you guys get that? Because this is one, two, three, four. So it's coming off the fourth carbon chain. Where if I go the other way, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, five. So it'll be the fifth carbon, right? So then five is greater than four. So the other direction is better, okay? Make sense? So you always want the lowest number possible on your branching or on your functional groups, your side chain groups, okay? Longest carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. If I went this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, not long enough. If I went this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, not long enough. The longest chain. Okay. So this guy, again, lowest number, one, two, three, four. If I went the other way, it's going to be five. So this guy would be off the fourth carbon chain. So then it's a two carbons, right? So that's ethyl, four ethyl octane. Okay. Now this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So both of those are seven. We want the eight. Minus carbon chain first. Okay, and then we want the branch to be coming off at the shortest point. If I go this way, one, two, three, four, five, that would be the fifth carbon. If I go this way, one, two, three, four, that will be the fourth carbon. So we're going to use the fourth carbon, right? So we're going to number this way. And so the branch, what three carbon chain? Three carbon chain, come on, participate. I know it's on the board, but you guys, can, I'm going to start racing them off the board now. Propyl, right? So propyl. So then it's going to be four propyl octane. Okay. You see how that works? Okay. Let's see. Test you guys out. And we got a lot to work on now, too, because we got a lot of stuff in our heads. Let's see. Okay. So we have some names. Okay. Okay, so how would I start with this one? Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, this way. Or we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that would be our longest chain, but we probably should probably count it the other way too. So let's just count it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so what would we call this guy? No, because we want the longest carbon chain, which is 10, right? No, it wouldn't be seven. Four, for what? For ethyl decane. Okay. One, two, three, four. That gives us the shortest number. If we go the other way, that's going to be seven, right? Or six, or, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it'll be six the other way, four that way. So we want to go the shortest number route. So we want to use the purple numbers. One, two, three, four. And then off the fourth carbon chain, you have one, two. You see that? Circle. Too many numbers, we'll erase some of them. So it's the purple numbers. You can count any way, right? But you want to find the one that's going to give you the lowest numbers to your, your side chain, right? Okay, does that help a little bit? There we go. So, okay. So that's one, two, three, four. That's the fourth carbon. So there's a side chain, there's an ethyl group on the fourth carbon. Then this is five, this is six, this is seven, this is eight, this is nine, this is 10, okay? So longest chain is 10. So that's how we got the decane, right? The side group, one, two carbons, ethyl, and it's on the fourth carbon, four dash ethyl. It's bookkeeping. Okay, what about this one here? Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is short resistance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you said four ethyl. Boy, I like those ethyls, don't I? Ethyl no name. Okay. Or non-name. Okay. What about this last one? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. So five. Is the shortest distance. So you said five propyl. Propyl decking. Are you sure it's decking? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, bipropyl decking. Piece cake? 
just need a whole bunch of practice, right? Yeah. So don't worry about it. I'll give you hundreds of questions. Wait, so Dr. Henry, so no nine is nine, right? That's right. And heptane is seven. That's right. Oh, okay. And decay is 10? Decay is 10, yes. Okay, I see. That is correct. Okay. Preguntas, questions. Okay. Let's get on to this. One more thing, one more thing. I'm ambitious. Okay. Okay, so let me clear. So you guys can kind of see, we've kind of already talked about it, right? So this guy, oops. Okay, it's possessed. So like here, this gives us that example, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and not one, two, three, four, right? So it's always gonna be the lower number. So we always want the lowest number possible, okay? And that's gonna happen in all these cases. We want the lowest number possible, okay? Questions, okay? So this guy would be the IUPAC nomenclature, right? Uh, again, systematic naming, IUPAC nomenclature, systematic naming, okay? And you guys are familiar with common naming, right? Because we already talked about how to go about that common. Name. Okay, so this is just showing you the difference between the common name and the systematic name. Right? So the common names never have those numbers, or the systematic names have numbers. That's the way I remember it. Although we have to use them somehow, right? In this common name. Okay. So you're gonna list your substitution in alphabetical order. So E comes before M, so E comes first, right? B comes before E, so B comes first, okay? So it's gonna be in alphabetical order, okay? And then, um, Again, you always want to have the lowest number. So you want to number them so that they're the lowest number. Okay. So one, two, three. Okay. Lowest number. Okay. And it's not going to be four. One, two, three, four. Because we know that three is lower than four. Okay. <clears throat> If we have doubles, let's say we have two methyl groups, we have to give each location of each methyl group, okay? So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So if we go this way, it's one, two on the second carbon. If we go this way, it's one, two, three on the third carbon. So we always wanna go to the lowest number. So we're gonna go two, four, dimethyl hexane. Okay. So now this is the debatable part, this hyphen here. Some places they use the hyphen and other places they do not. So that is not always gonna be the case where you have the hyphen, okay? You always have the hyphen between the two, four dimethyl, but you don't always have it five ethyl hyphen. So sometimes you'll see it with or without the hyphen, okay? So I don't wanna sit there and get you guys thought, caught up in the wrong way and then you're like, you see stuff in real life because when you see it in real life, it's always without the hyphen. Most of the cases textbook, they put the hyphen in there, but in real life, they don't. It means the same thing, right? And always remember if it's an ethyl or it ends with an O or something like that, it's part of something else something else there, right? And there's going to be something at the end that ends with either an or all or al or, and we'll talk about all of those here in a minute. Not in a minute, but in the future, I should say. Okay? 
So if there are three of exactly the same things, one, two, three, we use tri. So this guy would be triethyl, right? And you have to give the location of each one, three, three, six, triethyl, okay? And if there were six different things, then what would be six? Hexa. So it'd be hexaethyl. Okay, so you want to be sure that you know your Greek prefixes, right? Okay, questions, concerns, cash, credit card. Okay, so the other thing is that the prefixes aren't going to be alphabetized. Okay, so our prefixes aren't going to be alphabetized. It's going to be based upon the root itself. It's going to be based upon whether it's an ethyl or whether it's a butyl or whether it's going to be, okay? So the diatri stuff, it isn't going to be alphabetized, okay? Okay, we'll stop here. We'll pick this back up on, you know, that other day, Wednesday. Yeah, uh, as of right now, uh, no, I'm hoping stuff comes in tomorrow, so then it'll be yes. As of right now, you may end up having a simulation or we may do a lecture. I may do lecture, lecture, and then next week we'll do lab, lab. Okay? Is that okay? You guys are cool with that? You won't hate me too much? A little bit. Okay, you can hate me a little bit. I don't care. I'm not going to Okay, you guys have a good day.